ask you about coming out and what that was like for you? Yeah. Uh, my coming out experience was, it was, um, well, first you have to sort of come out to yourself. <laughs> there goes smooch. Um, first you have to come out to yourself. And for me, that was confusing because I always grew up a heavy kid, heavy child. And I would look at men who were fit and muscular and think, is that what I'm gonna look like? Is that like my body goals? Is that why I'm attracted to that? Or am I, you know, gay or queer or whatever? And especially back in the, you know, 80s, it wasn't so cool to be gay. Um, not that it is really now, but it was definitely a lot less um, accepted. It wasn't until uh, the summer of 1990 where I was hanging out and going to Rocky Horror Picture Show and there was another boy that I was hanging out with who I was finding myself being attracted to. So then there was one night out on a boat, out on a lake. Um, I confirmed the fact that it's men that I am sexually attracted to. And so, um, so that was sort of a, a huge awakening for myself. It was like electric, like I was shaking and it was like, I was excited and nervous and, and it was um, wonderful to sort of be honest with myself at that. So that was sort of like my first coming out to myself. So coming out to myself, I think, was the first sort of step. It was exciting. And then I knew that it was not cool to be gay in the 80s, um, now early 90s. And mostly because AIDS was a huge dilemma that was going on that was killing so many people, of our people, there was the stigma that, oh, you're gay, you probably have AIDS. It was like, and whenever any gay person died, it was like, oh, was it AIDS? Panic and hysteria fueled cruelty and stigma. It actually created a lot of homophobia. Um, I think there was a lot of um, really nasty stuff um, said about people who are gay because of, because it was really labeled a gay disease. Like I said, I could die in a plane crash and just because I'm gay, people will be like, was it AIDS related? Like, was it an AIDS related plane crash? It's like, no. Still, it was like, if you're gay, it's like, oh, AIDS. And that lasted for decades. I mean, I still think people sort of have that stereotype. Like if your grandmother dies, you're not gonna be like, oh, was it AIDS? Like, that's such a rude thing to say. So it was terrifying the thought of coming out that way. Also, I was brought up very religious in a Roman Catholic household and I went to church every Sunday, every holiday, and I was an altar boy and now I'm an altered boy, but um, you know, it was, it was tough to have that. My dad was a little bit um, um, less religious than my mother. God bless you. See, I still say God bless you to my cat when you hear her sneeze. Um, so, my mother was very religious, incredibly religious. And so the, the fear of her finding out um, was huge to me. So I felt like I couldn't be who I was, who I wanted to be. And when you're younger, especially when you're living at home, and I was going to Monroe Community College because I didn't know where I wanted to go in life. I was still very confused. Um, that you have that fear that you're under your parents' rule and if they find out something about you that that's gonna be the end of it. You know, there's the, your free ride, even though parents are required to take care of their children, you'd think. Um, and so then I started doing drag, which was helping me pull myself out of my shell and be more confident in myself and I think that my parents sort of noticed that. And then it wasn't until my mother found my bag of drag that I used to throw out the window into the bushes and then go around the house and grab it and then run off with my friends. Um, so she found my bag of drag and she was like, well, what's this? And I didn't want to lie anymore. So I told her that I perform. Then the shit hit the fan, literally. She lost it. 
she started screaming and crying and saying that this was sick, it was diseased, it was disgusting, it was against God, it was the devil's work, it was, um, you know, just horrible. And she didn't want to be associated with it. She was never going to accept it. And she literally said, I'm not paying money for some faggot to live in my house and drive a car and go to school. And um, you can do that somewhere else, but not here, not in my house. I was like, okay, well, I guess you've made yourself very clear. And um, luckily I had already sort of developed friendships with some of the drag queens who were more than happy to, to let me in. Because a lot of us, especially back in the day, went through similar experiences where our parents were not cool with it and kicked us out. So they let me sleep on their couch. Um, usually when I was passed out, they'd put me in full face of drag. So yeah, so my coming out experience was very traumatic. Um, and it was, um, there was um, a movie years ago called uh, Torch Song Trilogy. And there's a scene in the cemetery where Harvey Firestein is having a conversation with his mother, Anne Bancroft. And that's a scene that will make me dirty cry, just ugly cry, because it reminds me so much of my relationship with my mother. And it's so intense. And I think that's really what my coming out was like. It was intense. It was full of anger, tears, um, and it's, yeah, it's, um, it took a long time for my mother to get on my side with becoming gay. Long time. We're talking 20 years. Um, it was always, like, eventually it was sort of, okay, whatever, you're gay. Don't ask, don't tell. It was that don't ask, don't tell policy. If I don't ask any questions that are gonna make me uncomfortable, then I'm not gonna hear anything that I don't wanna hear that's gonna, um, you know, bother me. And so throughout the years, it's always been like that. And it wasn't until I was on the show RuPaul's Drag Race that my sisters wanted to have an open discussion with my parents really about what they were doing 